Hey there, my name is Cliff Long. I'm an instructor at Red Deer College in the Instrumentation Engineering Technology Program. And today I wanted to reach out to Chemistry 30 students and speak to them a little bit about instrumentation. Uh, two words best describe it, measurement and control. So if you can remember those two words, that's basically what instrumentation is. There's a lot of automation and stuff like that in there too. So if you like that, I suggest you look into instrumentation. And for the measurement portion of things today, I'd like to speak to you guys a little bit about an electrochemical cell here. And this here is a, uh, an explosion proof housing that I've pulled this electrochemical cell out of. And I know you guys talk about electrochemical cells in Chemistry 30. So if you look right here, we've got uh, some pins here. Those are, one of those pins is our anode and one of those pins is our cathode for our electrochemical cell. The electrolyte is housed in here. And then there's a gas permeable membrane that uh, is under this white little filter and it doesn't allow the electrolyte out, but it also, but it allows gas to permeate through because the gas that we're measuring here in ambient air with this, so the gas would just kind of flow across and, and uh, then go through the, the gas permeable membrane is hydrogen sulfide. It's highly toxic and it smells like rotten eggs. Um, just to give you an idea of how toxic it is, 100 parts per million or PPM uh, it brings, it makes it immediately dangerous to life and health. So it can make you disorientated, uh, make you faint, and can eventually kill you. So you want to stay out of those atmospheres of H2S, and that's why we monitor for it. We try to bring it down or control it, bring the, bring it down by maybe turning on an exhaust fan or, or shutting an emergency shutdown valve. So um, the uh, the half cell reaction that's occurring in this guy right here, this uh, is a right here. I'll just post it right now. There you can see it. So I'm hoping with your with your teacher you can figure out which part of the, which half, half reaction is oxidation and which one is reduction. Uh, there might be some other questions that you're doing in Chemistry 30 right now that you can, you can answer with that. Uh, but now, just to bring you guys in closer here, uh, down to our, our, our electrochemical cell here, I would just here's the housing that I pulled that out of. It's mounted right down there. And we're gonna wire it all up. And up top here, this here shows, it will display the concentration that we're measuring. So we're gonna play around with this. I'm gonna do a little demonstration of an instrumentation system and hopefully spark some interest in instrumentation. Here's our sensor mounted down low for, our electrochemical sensor mounted down low for uh, H2S. And if we go up, we follow this conduit right here. If I just wave this magnet, there you can see it's giving us a concentration uh, in the ambient air right now of the H2S. And you can see it's at zero PPM, so low concentration. And that means that our electrochemical cell here, there's very little current flowing through the electrodes. And so that's, it's being sensed up here and displayed right there. Now, I've also got this wired up, this system wired up. It connects over to our PLC right here, which is basically like an industrial computer. And it's solving logic. Solving logic, if this value up top here gets too high, then I've got a valve down here that shuts. And so out in industry, what we'd see happening here, this is like an emergency shutoff valve, it would close to block in process piping. You can see right here, this is where process piping would flow in through this valve and it would basically shut and stop the flow of the poisonous H2S right, gas. So I've connected a calibration, calibration gas here to our sensor here. If you look, the calibration gas is 10 ppm hydrogen sulfide. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. And if we look over at our valve right now, this open indicator indicates that it's open right now. We're gonna see what happens to that indicator when we start introducing H2S to our electrochemical cell. So, let's get up here. Let's just watch the controller readout here. It's measuring the current or electron movement. And there we go, our valve shut. So it shut right around 6 ppm, and that's what I had it set for, that's what I had it programmed for over here in our logic here. If we have a quick peek at our logic here, this here, six, indicates that's when it's gonna, right now we're reading nine ppm. When it gets to six, it's gonna, it's gonna close our valve over here, which it did, and when we bring it back down below four, it will then reopen. So that now shows you over here our PLC, that's where all of this logic is being solved right here, up in this industrial computer. We've got it all wired up, and then it all connects out over here to our gas detection trainer. So the thing that we were really wanted to highlight though for you guys in Chemistry 30 is the electrochemical cell that's right here. This is the, the sensor used to pick up and sense that H2S. Hey, I'm back. I wanna do a quick summary. So instrumentation is measurement and control. We demonstrated the measurement portion today with an electrochemical cell that you talk about in Chemistry 30. And the control portion, we shut a valve when the concentration got too high. 
One other thing I wanted to add is where would we find this H2S? Well, you would find it anywhere where there's decomposition of organic, organic matter. So sewage treatment plants, um, oil and gas facilities, that's where you'd find your H2S. I hope you enjoyed my demonstration of an electrochemical cell for H2S. If you have any more questions about our instrumentation engineering technology program here, make sure you check it out, rdc.ab.ca. Have a great day.